All right, part three. Everyone's hanging in there, and we're 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 continuing on with our um, vase with flowers and our pepper and uh, tomato. Um, we're coming along nicely here. We did our contour drawing, part one, and we discussed about contour drawing, the real importance of it. It's it's really for an artist if you're looking to really um, have real good success with drawing skills, then contour drawing is the way to go. It kind of like really demands that you f um, uh, focus in on the details of the shapes and your subject matter um, in a very careful manner by using your hand-eye coordination, and that and and then that will in, in turn help you to have much better drawing skills. You'll be able to draw all types of subject matter with a lot more ease. Um, versus using just sketchy methods or just trying to quickly render something with a pencil on paper. So um, again, if you haven't uh, seen part one, go back, please check out part one. I described the contour drawing in detail. We also continued on in part two with some more of the contour drawing on this particular painting. And now in part two, we also started our painting here, putting some nice, beautiful, fresh colors onto the paper. And um, we're going to finish up now on part three. So now here's something I sometimes do. We'll might as well, I'll kind of, um, in this painting, I, I think something like uh, like a watercolor artist brush would look nice in this painting, maybe in, in the foreground here, right in the very, very front of this, um, in this composition. And the reason why I say that is I think a nice little touch of red or orange would look good right over here, sort of making a nice like triangular uh, composition with the with the red red orange uh, color scheme. So I'm going to take this and put this over here on the table on my setup across from me, and then I'll just I'll draw that in. So I'll get my pencil and we'll. We'll draw that in. So I'm going to start here and contour draw the, the artist brush. So we'll go across the so I'm seeing a round shape where the ferrule is. Again I'm contour drawing. And I see that. Okay, now we'll continue on here. I see the hairs of the brush go up a little bit. And then they come down and they go up like that. And then there's a shadow underneath. So I'll put the shadow in. And it sort of gets very fine there. Okay, so now we'll just, sometimes I'll do that. I'll look at a composition and think it could use something else, a little extra. So we'll, we'll put in that brush there in, in the front. And then we'll continue on here. We'll grab our palette. Okay, so I got my palette ready to go. We're going to continue on with our... Um, with some of our leaves up here. Since we have, a, we'll take some cerulean blue, and I'll try to. I'll just try to put a little bit of color in there to to highlight the flower a little bit, so that we know. I'll put a little bit of raw sienna in there too. 
and again a little more some uh, cerulean blue and some splashing here. Okay, we're we'll work on some more of the um, maybe some of the, some of the stems a little bit, some uh, raw sienna and some sap green, and we'll just do a little bit of the. And again, um, I want to change the color a little bit for variety, just to change the color of the stems in the vase. So, Okay, that's pretty good. And let's get in and we'll do some we'll do some of the brush. So the brush is um, black. So I'll, I'll do some Payne's gray and burnt umber and some ivory black. And then I think the bottom of the brush is going to be a little darker. So I'm taking my time here. As you can see, I'm... Okay, now this is chrome here. So to get a chrome look, I'm going to just mix a little, maybe some blue into that black color. And then we'll use uh, burnt umber and raw sienna for the. For the hairs of the brush. I'm going to go across the top. And let's go with some orange, orangey red. Okay, so then we have our brush. I think that adds a little, a nice touch to the uh, composition. And we can also bring a little bit of uh, interest to the corners of the page. So we can add a little cerulean blue here. And some raw sienna raw umber, I should say. And maybe we'll do a little Do a little shadow effect over here as well. French ultramarine blue. And 
let's do a shadow under the brush. So here we can kind of see the, now this is where we, where we have to make sure this is completely dry before we do the shadow under this, uh, under the brush here. So it's definitely, um, about that time where it's okay, it's okay, it's, it's dry enough that we can put the shadow under there. And I think I can take some more cerulean blue and and a little bit of raw sienna and just put a, I put a little bit of color on the uh, paper just to give a little splash of color and so we we've had a fun time we've we've done our contour drawing we we got some nice shapes and some details with our contour drawing and we also um, planned out our design of our our composition here um, so that we had a nice um, our subject matter filled in the space of our rectangle and we also added in a paintbrush here because we, we thought that maybe it would look good adding a little something more to the composition so a paintbrush looks nice across the front here not not too much subject matter but just enough that it's quite interesting for a fun exercise and we just used plenty of fresh color right out of the two paint and that looks exciting and some splashing and having a good time okay so let's continue to uh, practice let's have a good time with watercolors everyone thanks for watching and again thanks to special thanks to uh, uh carola and adele for sending in their paintings they look beautiful you guys are doing a great job and we'll talk to you guys soon Bye bye